us a lot of stuff, but we were still with it for quite a little time. So, I guess I know the experts of somebody to help the question. Uh, obviously, with my, and I'm going to tell y'all why I started saying let the word speak all the time. The more you let the word speak, the less questions you have to answer. And I learned that some time ago. In fact, y'all yeah, remember Brother Wesby that came down here. Years ago, I used to hear Brother Wesby preach. And when it got time for question and answer times, so a lot of time people would be asking lots of questions. Every time Brother Wesby spoke, nobody would ask questions. And me and Dad asked him one time, why you don't never get any questions when you preach? <laughs> Brother Wesby said he tried to shut every question down. By just sticking with the word. And if you stick with the word, you're going to be better off. <clears throat> and let the word speak on the W campus. Campus is a good example of that. And Kimberly can tell y'all about former days from that. If you just stick with the word, you can almost get along with anybody, especially somebody that comes to be spiritual. So, there's a few more things we can look at. I try to be prepared. So now I have actually added to my thing to look at from Zimbabwe. So, now as I mentioned in reference to myself, going to Zimbabwe, it did. It helped me a lot because when I was able to see that there are people that are much poorer than I. There are people around that are destitute. There are still people around that look like the things that you can see from the book of Acts. And it helped my understanding with that. And so I want us to think about some things still in with different cultures. Being among different cultures can teach you various things. And know that is just because you do something. Or just because you believe or practice something does not necessarily make that thing right or wrong. And I have some examples for us. The women in Zimbabwe typically, even the ones that live in houses, they don't wear what we call over here bras. They just don't. Now, if you ask me why, I couldn't tell you. Lillian may be able to answer. Maybe it's because they don't have the wherewithal. To get them, I don't know. Go ahead. What did you say they do not wear? Bras. <laughs> yes, they do. Some, some <laughs> do, but I'm saying a lot of them don't when I was literally over there. Okay. But go ahead. Sorry. Um, mostly all of them do and should, but during summer, you went in a summer season mm -hmm. where everyone is hot, so they just maybe decide to right, get those, you. you know, but... They wear bras, and some of them, even if they cannot afford to wear a bra, they take a cloth like this, and uh, I'm just going to show you what they do. They tie it in the middle, tie it in the middle like that, and open here to hold, and here to hold, and then tie it at the back. Sorry for making you pretend, but... No, that, that's cool. That's not yeah. bothering me. Yeah, but that's how some of them, like, even if they don't have... They want to, and you know, most of them have a piece of cloth like this, mm -hmm. which is used for multiple things. Okay. I showed you how they can use it as a bra, mm -hmm. they can use it as a head wrap, mm -hmm. you know, different styles. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them, it's bigger than this. I don't know if you saw how they carry the babies on the back. I hear that in here. Yeah, yeah, the, the way we yes, carry our back. So. That's all right. I appreciate that. But and that doesn't mean to say that some don't wear them because they can't afford them. Yes, there may be some that may not afford and they don't wear, but all right, that's quite good. a few percentage. All right. So, thank, thank you. Thank you much. And so I will mention too, even if it's on account of being hot, and as I mentioned, it was February and it was hot. I'm going to tell you what people over here do. They'll tell the woman she wrong. And you will be lying through your teeth when you say it. That's all I want to say on that. I already mentioned about the low haircut, so I'm not going to mention more on that. Now, when I was over there, I saw people bathing in the river. 
And it's like we had a little bit of discussion when we were studying about Bathsheba. And I'm still thinking believe. Because see, if a person have to go bathe in a river, it ain't nothing wrong with it. Now, if you perverted and you something wrong with you, you make sure you don't be looking at the person. And you won't have no problem. You don't be acting a fool like David trying to go get on a mountaintop or on a building so you can look and see somebody. And you want me to tell you how I saw people bathing in the river? Because we had to walk down from a mountain to go to the valley so we could baptize some people. So yes, you can see when you're going down. Now if you know something wrong with your mind, don't be sitting there looking at the people acting a fool. Because that'll be on you. That's not going to be on them. But we like to try to throw out our sins or weaknesses off on other people a lot. Like so over there, if I had have been listening after them women, that would have been me doing wrong. Wouldn't have been nothing wrong with the woman taking a bath because she want to be clean. I have a question. Yes. Like when you said that you you didn't take baths, why was it? I mean, well, I mean, they, they don't have running water, a lot of them, and they will bring you a bucket in water sometime. But I thought about it. When you use that bucket in water, somebody else already used that bucket in water. So I just stopped taking a bath for that purpose on my own. But will they use the same water that other people use? They, they do some of them because if not, you don't have to keep <coughs> on going back and forward. And some of them have to walk a ways to bring that water in there. So you have to get used to your surroundings and environment. And in fact, when one time, and I got kind of upset, but one of the nights when we were in a lodge, Brother Allen took his bath at night. It was running water in the lodge. I told him, I'm going to wait till in the morning so my cleanness will last long. <laughs> now, y'all know I got up in the morning, and apparently the water was on the time, and I tried to turn it on. It was a little drip coming out of there. I shook my head. See? And that was the price I paid for not taking it at night like Brother Allen did. So he's the opportunity. That's it. <laughs> so Romans 10 and 4 says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Romans 4 15 says, Because the law work is rough, for where no law is, there is no transgression. 2 Corinthians 3 17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now, I know in the past some of you have seen me use these three scriptures. And I will probably be using them more often in the future. Because Christ is the end of the law. And we need to remember that, not Chabelle Johnson. The thing that matters is what the Word say. And now this is one we need to get serious about. Well, no law we us, there is no transgression. You can't offend in an area where there is no law. And we need to start thinking about that. And again, this one we often forget about too. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty in Jesus. And so dealing with different cultures, I want us to think about some of this. This particular location, Brother Shepherd, he had some goats. Python got in there with the goats and ate one of his goats. When we got up in the morning, Brother Shepherd cried because one of his goats was gone. So I want y'all to think about this. How many of you in here ever have to cry because you're raising your own food and if something goes wrong, you won't have anything to eat? And now that's why he cried because that was that man's food. You see over here, we worry about houses and cars. These people over there, they worrying about a daily food supply. And that's a lot of them. And I want us to think about this one. You have an example of a sister breastfeed in the church, sir. When I went over there, Brother Allen, he told me that I would see several people throughout the time breastfeeding over there. Now, here in the United States, you know how people act over breastfeeding. And also, they ain't got a whole lot of formula to eat, or they have formula, but if you don't have food to eat. I just so assume you're going to about breastfeed as long as you can. So if the baby's in there, are they crying or they need some? The woman going to go ahead and breastfeed the child. That's what the Lord gave her the milk for. Now over here, we going to be quibbling. You you know you don't supposed to be doing that. That's actually becoming one of the big things in the U.S. at this 
they are in moment. And I'm going to just say again on that. There's one other brother and not brother Allen. There's several preachers that's went over there from the States. One of them told me when he would see one of the sisters breastfeeding that he had to stay with for some time, her and her husband. He said he would have to go out of the house because he would start thinking some stuff. And now if you're going to be thinking crazy, yes, you need to get up and go somewhere. But... And I know different people have a problem with different things. But I can guarantee you I wasn't lusting after no woman because I happened to look up and see a woman breastfeeding a baby. I'm going to tell you what men need to do. They need to grow up a little bit and they need to stop being so perverted. And that's about all I can say. And so people in the church teach their sons to have respect for women. And teach them how to not lust after the people all the time. As she was mentioning, this is how they carry their babies over there. Now over here we done made some little fancy things you can go to the store and buy. They use a towel or some kind of other garment to carry their baby. And get this again, these people may be walking 13 kilometers to come to church service. And they have to take the baby with them like that. And if they in a car, it's a very good chance somebody holding the baby. There ain't no whole lot of car seats over there. And that's for the few that do have cars. Also, they have a traditional culture of that journey by singing and forming a line so that the speaker and guests can greet or be greeted by everybody. Now in the U.S., you know, typically the preacher, he'll walk to the back and he'll stand at the door so he can be greeted. Now I typically don't do that and the reason I personally don't do it because I don't want to make people shake my hand or greet me if they don't want to do it so that's why I typically don't go to the door. It's nothing wrong with the man going standing by the door. Now these people when they done they start singing a hymn they go out form a line while they singing and either all of them will come to you or you will go to each one individual. And it ain't nothing wrong with it. But now you start dealing with different cultures, people will start talking about you doing wrong. Now when we were in Masvingo on one of the first days of the week, Masvingo town, this woman, she knew that she needed to be baptized so that she could be added to the Lord's body. But she had some reservations because she just plainly told us she used prostitution as a way to feed her children. And in fact, the exact thing she told us, I wrote it down. She said, I come home and see my children hungry. So I go and find a man or men who may sympathize with me so that I can feed my children. And she said, with when, when and if she was added to the body, on account of her children being hungry, she would be tempted to go back into the world. And so you sisters stand here today. Especially those that may have children in the future or have some now that are young. How many of you would feel the need to look to prostitution to feed a child? Just because you don't have to do it don't mean somebody else can feel stuff like that. And yes, I can sympathize with a person that's in that way because that's a bad way to be in. But as far as a person wanting to feed their children... Anybody can understand that at the end of the day, you're going to do what it takes so your children can eat. And I want us to look at more things dealing with necessity and convenience. And again, that's why people need to start thinking about stuff. Now remember, just because things different in your culture and just because you're blessed, that's not telling how things feels for everybody else. So let us look at some things with necessity versus convenience. Now as some people and Christians that think all of the following things here on the screen are necessities in reference to church salvation and being saved. From a literal church building to a literal copy of the word to man-made baptism of pools and church building to benches to sit on to song. First Timothy 6, 6 through 8. 
It says, but godliness with content is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and rain, let us be there with content. The American way of life has caused some people to forget the difference between needs and wants. And because of this, we sometimes misunderstand and misrepresent the scriptures. And this causes us, including people like Chevelle Johnson and Yes, I've done, to call some things wrong that are not wrong. Likewise, we some things portray things as right or the only way when they are not necessarily right or the only way. Now, all I can say is when you learn better, do better. For instance, when it comes to a literal copy of the Word. And if it is mandatory that every person have a literal copy of the Word, which literal copy do you have to have? The King James Version, the New King James Version, the New International Version, the Standard Version, the, the American Standard Version, the... New International, the Interlinear, which one you have to hate. Now this young lady here, her name was Patricia Cannabon. She wanted a literal copy of the worker because she didn't help one. Now she was the sister in the body. A lot of people over there don't help one because it's not a whole lot on just laying the right. And if you have the opportunity to buy this or some food to eat and you don't help none, I can tell you what the average person will do. They'll buy some food. But I gave her my Bible that I had on me. And so what I then proceeded to do from that point when we would happen to go through a town, and it wasn't even a lot of them around to be found as far as Bibles, specifically King James, since that's what I used. But when I was passing through a shop, if they had King James Version available in there, I would pick it up so that when people would ask me for a copy, I could give it to them. And when we was in Chiloso, me and Brother Allen, we split 50-50 and we gave the church in that area $100 so that they could purchase Bibles so that the church could help. The preacher that had one, but a whole lot of his pages was torn out and missing. I want y'all to think about stuff like that. Now, in reference to that, it is of a necessity to hear, believe, and obey the word. It is of a necessity to have people teaching the word. It's of a necessity to have people preaching the word. And now, don't get me wrong, it is an excellent aid and it's beneficial to have a literal copy of the word. Because then you can learn a lot of stuff. And then, who knows, you may be a person that starts saying, let the word speak. But I tell you one thing, it is not a requirement for each individual to have a little or a copy of the word to attain salvation. And Romans 10, 8 through 14, will bear that out. It says, but what says it? The word is neither even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich and all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And Romans 10, 17 says, <coughs> Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So again, it is of a necessity to help somebody teaching the gospel. It is of a necessity that you believe and obey the gospel. Not of a necessity that you have a little or a copy of the book. Somebody say it is, then you just say it that half the people are more and don't bother be lost on account of not having one available. Now, over in Zimbabwe, song books are rarely seen. I saw one brother over there with a song book. One. What they would do over there is a man would lead a song by memory and everybody else would follow the song lead. It is not a requirement to have a song. Ephesians 5 and 18. Speaking to yourselves in songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. I mean, we could take the book of Psalms and sing straight from it. 
If it's something that apply today. But watch this. And this is why I say so much. Let the word speak. This is another thing I've been hearing throughout the years. Even in the churches of Christ. We've had several brethren throughout the years that have a notion of saying sing only. Why teach against instrumental music by telling lies? You think people can't look at the scripture and know that you have to do more than sing only? It's fine to teach people to sing how they're supposed to sing, but don't lie to do. Sing and make melody in your heart. Does that look like sing only? It says sing and make melody in the heart. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. That one tell you sing with grace in your heart. So the condition is more than the sing. You have to make melody in the heart. You have to sing with grace in the heart. And we need to stop be saying things that's not true because people can see that. And we wonder why it'd be hard to convert people. Now, all these denominations of churches are already becoming with some kind of everything. So if you saying you're going to present the simple, unadulterated truth, we need to start doing it. And quit adding our own things into it. Is it a necessity to have a man-made baptism or pool in a church building? Consider the following examples, straight from in Zimbabwe. You know John 3.23 says, And John also was baptizing in Anna and in the Salem, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. And so again, just like the song book. Now if somebody wants a song book, that's fine. But while we was on that, Sing and make melody in the heart. I'm going to tell you what song books do for us. We so worried about making melody by notes on a page that we sometimes forget to make the melody in the heart. And we need to think about that. Because I know how it told us to make the melody. When it comes to... I don't know if that's always the case, Chabelle. Yes, sir. That, that the song books keep us from making melody in our heart. I mean, I guess it could be that. But the same thing could be said... For the instruments of music, you know, it it goes. No, I'm not affirming we need instrumental music. So I'm saying we need to stop telling a lot of teacher against instrumental music. When we say sing only, we need to point out what the scriptures say, and we need to make the melody in the heart. So no, I don't agree with no instrumental music. Right. Well, that's what it would sound like. I mean, the instrumental music is in a sense. Adding something to it. That is right, addition. it's adding something to it. I agree. We're supposed to sing and make melody in our hearts. And that's, you know, the teaching for, uh, I guess, the teaching against instrumental music that you're talking about, that's what that, it's basically in my mind a warning of, you know, don't add that, just do what it says. You know what I mean? Just I, 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 I do and make not melody understand in that, but when we say sing only, we just twisted the scripture. And so my thing is, tell the truth, come with the whole entire truth, and then you tell why you don't do another specific thing. But we have to, we got to quit adding and twisting and stuff. And the reason why people can see that we done doing it. Oh, you feel like the, oh, I see what you're saying. You feel yes, like sir. the melody in your heart is the part that we maybe leave out sometimes. We we do sometimes. Now not everybody, but we do. Like like other churches I go to, you can like when they play the loud music and the bang bang. Sometimes that distracts me from the music from my heart because I'm I can just hear. Missing. I can okay. hear when they when they sing it from their voice, their mm -hmm. true voice. I can I can feel right. the trueness coming out. Instead yeah. of some of that loud music, cause it's, it it kind of throws it off. Mm -hmm. I understand. It, that, that that's one reason why it's good to just sing anyway. Sing, right. I mean that that last point on that slide. I mean that's not that's not necessarily the truth. I mean that's not on which slide. Go back. I guess one more. Um, you know that's not true of everybody. Oh, I, I agree that that's not true of everybody. And one thing that we I have to keep in mind is, you know, what a songbook does is it allows us to be decently in order. 
and everything we have to do has to be done decently in order. So we can't have somebody up here just randomly saying words in a song that we don't know. I mean, if we're going to be like we should be, like Paul was urging the Corinthians to be, to be orderly in what we do in our worship to God, then we're going to have to have, I mean, I guess, yeah, we could memorize them. And if all we want to do is memorize a few songs as a group, that would be okay. We could do that. Yeah, that's what but, I mean. That's what they're doing in Zimbabwe. Saying, yeah, right? and that, that's fine. But they have to be decent in order, just like we do. I, I agree. They need to be decent and in order. But the point going to be still: is it a necessity to have a song? No, it's not necessarily a necessity. But that last point is definitely not true. It can be true, but it's not always. That's, true. that's the point. If it can be true, it's true. I didn't say in every case it's true, but it's true. It's true. Not in every instance. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I'm, I'm seeing from your slides and like the places you are mentioning, like Mashingo, mm -hmm. uh, Cholocho, mm -hmm. some of the areas you went, those are the considered some of the most remote areas mm -hmm. of Zimbabwe. There you are. So, <laughs> I, I cannot speak much. I can speak some about those areas because my mother was, a, was like a traveling nurse and she opened a lot of clinics around. And I used to go in the villages. My mother never liked to work in the city, but mm -hmm. I grew up in the city. So we had hymn books. Mm -hmm. And it varies per church. You know, which church you go to. Uh, they have hymn books, just like, you know, we have in here right now. But just because I think you saw the remote areas where people are most, uh, poverty is prevalent to, some cannot afford them and stuff, you know, and that's why they don't have the hymn books and they memorize songs, you know, and they can memorize so many songs and sing without a hymn book. But if they were to be given a hymn book, they would love to, you know, learn more songs than they can do. Yeah, that is very true. I agree that yeah. I was going to send some books over there when I got back. Mm -hmm. So it's When coming. I tried to do that, the cost of the shipping. Oh, yeah, so the shipping you, is, yeah, when you put added. the, you know, when you put both of what we're saying together, I mean, it, it's obviously not a necessity to our salvation that we have a songbook or don't. You know, the singing and making melody in our hearts is the commandment for our, from our Lord. And so, yes, you know, the way we do that needs to be done, uh, you know, I would say with our voices, that's what singing is, mm -hmm. and with the melody with our hearts. Uh, if that the song books, you know, can help with the decently and in order. And, and what it, one of the, and another one, sing with understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, pray with the Spirit and pray with understanding. Right. And, 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 spirit and you know, this idea of teaching and mastery, it seems like it's something together we do. And so somehow, whether it's through memorization or a song book or something, you know, we've got to be able to do that together. You know, and yes, I think there's multiple ways that can be achieved. Amen. I could go further, but I'm going to leave this part for now. But we need to kind of think back and think about how things would have been introduced. And we can see some introductions in the Old Testament with the little bit. And I submit the same thing in reference to baptism of poop. Is it a necessity to have a man made baptism of poop in a church building? Obviously not. Can it be beneficial? Yes, it probably can be beneficial. Is it a necessity? No, I was baptized in, at Lake Lyon State Park. Another time, I may tell y'all what happened when you ask people if they can use a baptism or pool in their building. Is it a necessity to have a church build and pew successful? And consider the following example. So I don't really have to speak to it. Pictures to speak. They had some kind of building. I don't know what kind. <coughs> we got rain though. 
We had church service sitting in the car. And they trying to make a structure so they'll have something. That's why we had church service. It. Both days the same exact time, same location. We have in church service, women sitting out there on the ground. The men made <coughs> some seats. They took some logs that they could and they made them out of logs. They're not fancy. They made some. Same thing at this location. The sister sitting on the ground. The brother and made some log seats. That's a different location from the last. So just think about these things. Now here they had a structure of some kind within the village. And my understanding would be it just belonged to the village. But we met in there. We'll side in there too. Now this one was the apartment complex that was being built, but it wasn't yet finished. And because so many people didn't have nowhere to stay, they told them as long as the complex not finished, as long as the workers not there, they can come in there and live in them until they finish the complex, but then they have to go. We had service in the people houses. We had service in school houses. We had service in open structures made out of clay, dirt, and wood. We had services at nighttime. All three of these are examples of nighttime. I have more examples than that. One in some structure of some kind. One out with just a roof covering. And one just sitting on the ground. Now we slept right there, brother. Ellen put his tent up so the flies didn't bother him. I told him, I'm like, I ain't putting no tent up. That's too much work. I just slept in there. Uh, I didn't put mine up. I did leave my tent over there for one of the preachers, too. But considering those examples, is it a necessity to have a church building? You can ask them, they can tell you. Is it a necessity to have a building? It's proven by the slides that you can help church almost anywhere at any location or place. But let me suggest, it is a necessity, it's a necessity to be at a location somewhere to help church. Now that is a necessity, to be at a location somewhere. It is not a necessity to be in a literal structure or church building somewhere. That's not a necessity. That's been proven. At this particular location where we did get rain on it, they wanted $50 so they could buy the location where they was because they said they wanted to erect the church building. Now, I suggest something else. If you are a Christian, and that's even if it's me, if you believe that a church building is a necessity, you need to do all that you can as an individual to help fund these poor churches and Christians around the world. So they can obtain a church building. That's if you believe it's a necessity. Because if you believe it's a necessity, you're not obligated to help fund them people. And I want us to think about one more thing. And I've been looking at this one a long time. Had debates on it. Kept looking at it. And then I came over here and y'all fixed my understanding on one scripture. And all that did is cause me to have another question. So, and we just got a little bit more. Become a meal is where the church is. And this is why I'm going to just keep saying from now on, letting the word speak. And that's really why I started saying letting the word speak. Because it's, it's some things I just had to learn. And I'm going to say this and I mean this. If I be lost, I'm going to be lost based on my understanding. I'm not going to be lost based on nobody else's understanding. Now we can study together and learn together. But at the end of the day, if Shabelle Johnson be lost, I'm going to have to go with my own understanding at the end of the day. Because I'm the one have to meet Jesus and lay my life on.
And I have had to go back to people on the other side on various things and tell them they was correct. And I don't have a problem doing that with anybody if I find out on them. But I want us to think about this. And in the future, we need to do this. When does it become a sin to eat what a church means? <laughs> we also need to think about who is deciding it is a sin. And consider the following. So I pointed out this was in a structure somewhere. I don't know who owned it. They didn't call it a church building to my knowledge. We wouldn't call that a church building. I assume nobody will have a problem with the house. Now this place, they actually was building a building, a quote church building. In fact, if you may not can see it good, but they held bricks stacked back against the wall. They're building it themselves. It's bricks stacked back there that they use in the building. So, now at this place, we did eat food. This is the location where some of those men came from 20, 30 kilometers walking on foot. And the sisters did the same thing. They were sitting over there against the wall on the other side that's not on the screen. And at this place, we did eat food. The sisters, they went out there. They used a the little round barrel low to the ground. And they put some iron on it. And they built the fire and they cooked some rice, greens, and soup. And I'm going to tell y'all about my ignorant self. And I thought about it when I was over there and I kept thinking about it when I came back. My ignorant self. My ignorant self. Thought I was sinning for sitting over there on the ground in some dirt. Ain't food where the church met it. Now that's how ignorant I was. Due to our teachings. Because first off, if it is wrong, start defining how it's wrong and when it's wrong. Now we preach probably six or seven lessons that day between the two of us. One of them I had on marriage and when we got done with that one, we had an hour long discussion. So there we out there walking and stuff. I wonder what would happen if I hadn't ate no food. I wonder if I could have finished teaching people lessons after we finished it. And not only did we eat food at many other locations we were at, we had to sleep in them too. The various structures we had service in. And so in the future we need to look at these things. When did in, at the location or place the church assembled that become wrong? Why is it wrong and who made it wrong? There was one literal place over there that I actually went to that had a literal quote church building. And now this one, we make it wrong. If it's a building that looked like that, now it's wrong. And that's why I just asked that stuff again. And I'm going to tell y'all something else about this particular place. Same thing like over here in the United States and Mississippi. This was the only place I literally went to there where we were in a literal church building that looked like the ones here. This was in Bulawayo. They Bula have some, yeah. Bulawayo. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but they have some whites in that area. They made a church deal. I'm going to tell you what they did. They come and meet there in the church building, and they won't let the black people come and meet with them. So they ended up deciding, well, we, the white Christians, will come in the morning. And you can't come use it, but you have to come after we already go. But only our stuff can be on the side. Same kind of stuff you see over here. But back to the point, we need to think about these things. In light of Acts 20, 11, and that's the one over there in Acts 20, I'll just go ahead and say this cause. You know, if I be wrong, I just be wrong. And I don't have a problem I'm saying. I had always for years, and my auntie and my sister can bear that and my brother. I had always been saying over there in 20, 
referring to Eutychus, if the dead man was raised up or he was revived and he ate food, who going to have a problem with it? And now that was my holding point. And now I came over here and I was listening to y'all and one day somebody had enough sense in here to say, that's Paul that came back up there and ate. So I'm sitting back there to myself. I've been saying Eutychus the whole time. And see, yes, yeah, Chevelle Johnson know how to shut up when he may be wrong. I always consider what somebody else said. You know what I did? I just took myself right home and I pulled out my computer and I pulled out some study books and I finally pulled out different versions of the Bible and I said, let me look this stuff up. You want me to tell you what I said? The brother I'm right. This is referencing Paul. Then I called another brother and I told him, he told me, I didn't always thought that was you. And then he looked at it and he called me back and he said, Well, Shabelle, that is Paul. But I'm going to tell you all that did. Truthfully, y'all took away my one holding point, my one sticking point. Because now my question is, why are we telling people they can't do what Paul did? Also, 2 Peter 2.13 and Jude 12. Those two, I, hold on, I'll get you. But 2 Peter 2.13 and Jude 12, I've been stuck on those two a long time. Because I know they apply some kind of way. And in the non-institution of Church of Christ, we completely pretty much ignore them. That's what we do. And I know they in there for a reason. And then when you consider how the Lord's Supper was introduced, and when you consider 1 Corinthians 11, one thing about it, all those passages have to harmonize. And at this point, I'm not putting the position out either way. But I am saying we need to look at this stuff and we need to study it. Because Shabelle Johnson can be wrong. Other people in here can be wrong. The general non-institutional body can be wrong. And the quote, non, the quote institutional general body can be wrong. And these things need to be harmonized. Yes, sir. I, I think you answered my question. It appears that you just want us to study this topic. Is that what yes, it is? Yes, sir. That's what needs to be done. I mean, for the time being, one thing in Acts 20 verse 11 is the only thing that can be proved from the text is that Paul was the only one that ate. What difference does it make? It's in the same building. It does make a big difference because in, in, first, in first Corinthians 11, this is they were making it a common meal. And so, you're right, these scriptures have to harmonize themselves. So what we can't do is, you know, there's a difference between eating a common meal and actually somebody breaking out a Snickers bar because they're hungry. And we've been here for hours upon hours. There's a big difference between that and that's what the text bears out. It's the only thing in Acts 20 that can be proven is that Paul was the only one that ate. And then in 1 Corinthians 11, it seems that Paul is saying, hey, if you're hungry, y'all made this a common meal Go home and eat. So, you know, for the time being, I don't know if that helps any, but, you know, yeah, you're right. We can study it further. I'm looking at 1 Corinthians 11 forever. I will say one thing for people that love 1 Corinthians 11. You definitely want to talk to some of the institutional brethren that cost several people, and this would just be some for the future. But when you go to 1 Corinthians 11, in my experience, all we do is run right away from them. They try to hold us over there, and we, we, we start running from them. But that's all I have on that. So that last part, something to think about. Any other questions or comments? And so like I always say, we need to be willing to let the Word speak. And until the day I die, that's what I'm going to try to do. Yes, I just want to applaud you and thank you for uh, bringing to light things about uh, my country to certain people who may never have a chance to go there. It's like you just brought Zimbabwe to, to them, to some people, you know, and um, I just wanted to add that of of what I've seen since I came in here, everything you've shown is basically in the remote areas. 
and there are some big cities that are kind of like New York, California, where people live in houses like you are living right now, and they've got cars and <coughs> streets. You know, that's how I grew up to the point where when my auntie brought me to Mississippi, I cried for a week. I wanted to go back home. I cried for a week. Honestly, truthfully to God, I cried for a week. When we were coming, because I flew into Atlanta, and it was at night. So I, I just wanted to sleep. I was so jet lagged. The following day, she said, I'm going to take you to our our big city. It's called Columbus. And we, li we live in West Point. And she started driving me around Columbus, around. I'll never forget. She drove me around somewhere. Is it 9th Avenue or 9th Street? Where they've got these big houses. Just a few big houses. A few to me. Because we have areas where we have a lot. And she was so excited to be showing me Columbus. And I remember my face was just like, <laughs> like, this is it. Like, seriously, I want to go back home. But, you know, I, I, I've been here 23 years now. I've lived out of Mississippi for a while. I lived in Arizona, Atlanta, you know. But um, it's, it's not, you know, it's, it, it's I, I love Mississippi now. It's like maybe with the way I'm getting older. When I was young, I wanted to be in the big cities. Now, it, Mississippi is a beautiful place. It's just like some of the places we have in Africa. So, and, and not just in Zimbabwe. In Africa is a war. Just like here, there's places like Mississippi and there's places like California and New York. It's like that too in Africa. Yeah. But the one, the sad thing that uh, bothers me about Africa most of the poverty that we have, even in Zimbabwe, it's caused by our politicians, our governors who are greedy. They want they steal from their own people. And then it makes two classes. You know, before there used to be three classes of society. The poor, the middle class, and the rich. Now, excuse me, it's the rich and the poor. The rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. Well, so, in that sense, things yeah. generally like that everywhere, but we going to cut off All right, thank you, sir. And as far as y'all keeping y'all 30 minutes, hopefully that 30 minutes didn't hurt y'all too bad, but we'll leave that as that. And if anybody want to talk about anything afterwards, I'm perfectly willing to do that. I'm always ready and willing to discuss the words, so that is no problem. Brother Murray, if you'd be willing, give us a word of prayer.